I speak to a lot of people on calls every week and the vast majority of them have the same complaint. My marketing is just not working. No one is clicking. No one's buying our stuff. The algorithm isn't promoting our content. Most of the time, the answer is actually pretty simple. They're just not doing enough. The quality is fine, but they're not doing enough of it. And they give up too quickly. There's an unrealistic expectation these days that if you post on LinkedIn or you make a video for YouTube or your website, then success will quickly follow. It'd be great if that was actually true, but unfortunately it's not. Maybe it's the get rich in 30 days by doing nothing courses that have perpetuated this fallacy. If it was true, my job would be a hell of a lot easier, I can tell you that. A lot of these people have tried so many different things, but because none of it has brought the immediate success they'd hoped for and expected, they got angry, they ditched it and moved on to something else, when actually they just needed to keep going and get into the sweet spot. Take LinkedIn, for example. It's the best social media channel for B2B, full stop. If getting your messages out to business decision makers is part of your marketing strategy, there really is nowhere else to go. You may have tried posting a few times, but become disillusioned because you're not getting the engagement that you see others get. And even that limited engagement isn't converting into leads. And so you take your foot off the pedal and you stop posting and you tell everyone who will listen that LinkedIn just doesn't work. It does work, you just needed to keep going and keep learning. It's universally accepted that depending on what you're selling, there needs to be seven touch points with your brand before they'll buy from you. If what you sell is expensive, it's probably gonna be more than seven, maybe 14. And if it's less expensive, you probably won't need seven touch points. It may be only one. What I love about the rule of seven though, is that it forces you not to give up and become disillusioned too early. You have to keep going. You do this by showing up where your ideal customer hangs out, the social media platforms they're on, and then you make sure that your messages are consistently demonstrating how you can help them with their pains, their problems, and their frustrations. But here's where the magic happens, and only a few businesses have tapped into this, the sweet spot, if you like. The mere fact that you continue to show up taps into a widely understood psychological effect. We humans associate frequency with trust. The more often you show up in front of them, the more they see you, the more they know you, the more they like you, the more they trust you. You become more familiar to them, less scary, so they trust you. Now, of course, as I've explained in some depth on previous videos, you can't do this to the 8 billion people on the planet. I mean, you wouldn't want to either. A lot of them wouldn't be the right fit for your business. If you try to appeal to everyone, your marketing messages would have to be really broad. And that means they'll also be vanilla and boring and bland and no one's gonna take any notice of you. So you need to understand who your ideal customer is. And the best way to do this is to look at your current top 10 or top 20 clients and look at their demographics, their gender, their age, income, occupation. You'll also wanna know their geographic details and so where they live, but you'll need to go deeper and understand their psychological characteristics as well. Their values, their desires, goals, interests, lifestyle choices, even their political affiliations. This is where you should spend most of your time and effort. These are the things that make them them. Because knowing that they're men and aged between 40 and 55 who live in London often isn't enough information for you to craft lead generating marketing messages. You may have a wider range of ideal customer than that, depending on the product or the service that you sell, because their needs may be more problem based. But you can't serve the same messages to those different groups of people, because what appeals to one will turn the other off completely. So here's the answer to that. When you really understand those psychological characteristics, you can get into something I call delight and despair. On the one side, we have the stuff that delights them, their dreams and their wants, all the things they wish would happen, the place where their life or work would be so much easier. And on the other side, we have the stuff they despair about, their fears, their problems, their pains and frustrations, the things they're trying to solve in relation to your product or service. Understanding these things in detail will allow you to position your business as the bridge, the route from despair to delight. The job of your business, your product, the service you sell, its only mission is to move them away from where they are in despair and towards where they want to be, delight. The better that you can communicate that, the better chance you'll have of someone taking action and actually buying from you. This is where conversions happen. It's moving them away from despair and into delight. If you found this useful, please give it a like and tell me in the comments which bit you found most useful. See you on the next one.